Sometimes it's hard to tell how far we've been until we look at where we came from. We have been in our farmhouse for five years now. We have done so many projects, but those have been mixed in while caring for eight children. We had three new babies here in this farmhouse in the last five years, homeschooling, running a business. It's easy to forget all the work that we've done until looking at the snapshot in time of where our home is now and where we started. I say a snapshot in time because a home is truly never done. Whenever you are living in it, using it, finding the ways that it functions, you'll find different ways to decorate it, to redo things. Things always need maintenance and care, but we have found ways to make this home function and serve our family so much better in the last five years as our family has grown so much. I'm not usually a sentimental person, but as I was collecting together, all of the footage for the years that we've been in this home definitely made me a little bit emotional looking at the way that the children have grown, the way the house has changed, the animals even have grown. Time just really flies by. I don't really feel like we've spent five years living in chaos and renovation mode and mess. These have truly just been projects spread out over time that we've tackled together as a family. Some aesthetic, some that actually help everything to function better. Before taking you inside, let's talk a little bit about the exterior and the changes that we made there. We made custom or had made custom runner trim that matched the side porch because we believe that originally this Victorian farmhouse would have had it and it was removed at some point. Even if that's not necessarily true, it definitely looks better with it and the corbels. We painted the porch, we painted the front door and the trim. We added sidewalks that go between the house, the garage, and the cottage. We painted the cottage blue to give it a little bit more curb appeal. Added a gravel patio in the back, which makes this space just so usable for eating outside. As you can see, the changes that we made outside have mostly just been aesthetic and fairly simple other than the sidewalks nothing was too major a lot of paint some gravel a lot of elbow grease and planting but it made such a difference in the way that this outside feels Let's step into the house, shall we? This is the entryway. As you can see, the floors were pretty scuffed up. We refinished them. We added a wood stove. We did some painting, light fixture, just some minor changes in here. And there's more that I want to change. I actually have a paint project I wanna do in here. The first thing that Luke and I did to really improve this space, well, other than having the floors refinished, that was big. We added a slate tile hearth pad and a wood stove, which has made a dramatic difference in the way that this whole downstairs feels. It is so cozy right next to the kitchen and the living room, especially this time of year. Couldn't recommend a wood stove more, especially if it's right in the middle of the main level and if it gets cold where you live. I also made some DIY pleated lampshades for this space added a vintage rug, a little bit of art, a little antique dresser or washstand piece, painted the front door and the trim around it. Now what I want to do in here is paint the walls, ceiling, and trim all the same color tan that the door is. We'll see, but I have a feeling it's gonna look pretty good. It feels warm and cozy in here. There's more that I can do, but for now, it totally works as a simple entryway for our family. Now, we never actually enter here. We enter through the mudroom. All right, next, let's talk about the kitchen. This is my favorite makeover in the whole house. We really brightened it up, shined it up, gave it back some vintage charm. It was redone, I believe, in the early 2000s, maybe the 90s, maybe the 80s. Okay, I clearly have no idea but it didn't have the country antique charm that I wanted. I also wanted a larger window to look out at the barn and the silo and the kids playing. 
So we needed to remove some cabinets to make way for that. And also for some open shelving and my sink that I found at a salvage shop. I found the oven and stove, the gas oven and stove on Facebook Marketplace. We had that restored. I made some check curtains. We added beadboard and some vintage and antique light fixtures. Some were found locally at garage sales and antique stores. Some were found on Etsy. I added baskets and where the refrigerator was before, we put a vintage hutch to keep our plates and bowls and mugs and a few little other things throughout the kitchen, but I really do feel like this is my favorite transformation in the whole house. The large work table with the quartz top really gives us more space to cut and prep and serve and more seating for our family and ultimately just makes this space function a lot better for someone who cooks a lot at home, which would be me. Okay, let's talk about this little nook here that had nothing in it. We added floor to ceiling cabinetry that originally was supposed to serve as sort of an office. So we have printers in there and the computer and my camera gear, but we ended up also using it for more kitchen storage as well as games and a few family things. This side here was the original Eden kitchen area that we made a few changes to. We added a vinyl floor mat. We had the floors refinished, but that's a constant throughout the entire house. Brought in a little bit of color with the blue, some art, a new light fixture, a table, and that's pretty much it. It serves us very well. We eat three meals a day here. Next to the kitchen and the mudroom, the pantry is one of the hardest working rooms in the house. It isn't a project we were able to complete right away because the kitchen took such a priority. Because of the nature of my business, filming myself cooking online, I needed to get that one light and airy so that I could photograph and pretty so I could film very quickly. The pantry took a back seat, but I was so happy when we had a chance to complete it. We added cabinetry to the bottom level, which made it function considerably better. There was really nowhere to put anything except for some wire shelves where things could kind of fall over. Then we added some chunky shelves, painted everything green, added in a few accessories to make it function nice so that our cleaning supplies could be a bit prettier. You can almost always find sourdough fermenting in here, water kefir, bulk foods, and it's almost always a mess, but it serves us very, very well. One thing that has made our farmhouse comfortable over these last five years are our Birch mattresses. Birch happens to be the sponsor of today's video. Check them out during the final hours of their New Year's sale where you can get 20% off your purchase. Birch makes mattresses that are crafted with organic and natural materials that have been sustainably sourced. So unlike other brands, it doesn't contain fiberglass, which could be harmful to your health. We spend a third of our lives asleep, so it makes sense and is very important to not neglect that environment. Unlike the off-gassing that can happen with traditional mattresses, you can rest assured that that will not happen with Birch. We have three Birch mattresses throughout our home, two here in the boys' room that are the twin size. We also have the Birch Lux, which is a premium upgrade to the original well-loved Birch Natural mattress. The Lux is exceptionally comfortable. It's comprised of eight different layers of organic cashmere, organic wool, organic cotton, and 100% natural latex. 
Unlike synthetic mattresses, the wool in these mattresses makes it hypoallergenic, which is allergen and mildew resistant. Birch offers a 100 night sleep trial plus a 25 year warranty. So you can be sure that what you are investing in will last a long time. The best part about all of this is that Birch delivers your mattress right to your door for free within the US. They also offer in-home setup and removal to make your buying experience as convenient as possible. It comes rolled up in a box and it's super easy to set up. I love my Birch mattress and I think that you would too. If you're looking for a new bed, make sure to check out Birch during the last few days of their New Year's sale to get 20% off your Birch mattress plus two free Eco Rest pillows. You can visit birchliving.com forward slash farmhouse or grab this QR code here. It'll also be linked in the description box below. Speaking of rooms that are always a mess, this mud room for sure is one of them. One of the things we did was add cabinetry to make this space work out for our family. We could probably use a lot more. We have a lot of coats, a lot of coveralls, boots, socks, all the things that we try to shove in this room, but it does work out and we have some thoughts and plans about how we could make it work out even better. Another thing that we needed to do was pull down this double layer of plexiglass, basically. It looked kind of like a second layer of glass, but it wasn't exactly that, and reglaze the outside windows. This space has so much light. A lot of afternoons, I'm racing against the clock to get something photographed or filmed for the blog because I do my work for that. In the afternoon, it's already getting dark, and I'll pull things here on this bench to photograph because it's the last one to lose the light. We added a vinyl mat in here, of course, repainted the floors, and they could probably stand to be painted again because that original footage was taken from a long time ago, but it does function well. We use this room like crazy. All right, let's step into what is our main bedroom. It is a light filled, beautiful room. It just needed some paint and the floors to be refinished and lots of decor. I do have some big plans for some paint in here, do things a little bit differently. I want to add something to make the trim contrast against the walls a bit better like they originally had. I didn't really like the red, but I have plans for how we can do that. This space, again, everything in this house is a work in progress. One thing we did was add curtains. I just took some cheap curtains and pleated them at the top. I could see adding something with a bit more pattern and texture at some point, but for now, this works really well. Another project that we tackled was making a focal wall by using a faux mantle. So there isn't any original chimney or fireplace in this room but I wanted it to have the feel. So we took slate tiles again, like we did for the wood stove, only this time it was just faux. So we weren't as worried about it being to code or anything. There wouldn't really be any fire, but we pretty much did the exact same process. Now for anything I'm talking about on here, there is an original YouTube video all about the process for everything. That's where I gathered all of this footage. So if you want to do something similar, Make sure just to go to Farmhouse on Boone on YouTube or just search in the search bar Farmhouse on Boone faux mantle or anything. I have a whole playlist for a kitchen renovation where I show every step of the way. So if you're curious about the table in the middle or the paint colors or how I made the curtains, it's all somewhere on YouTube. We found at, I forget where, where did we find it? I think it was a salvage shop this fireplace insert, it's actually vintage. We had it sandblasted and we did bricks and then I painted it with the tan color, the mantle that I also used for the front door and the beadboard in the bathroom. It's the same color that I also plan to hopefully carry around all of the trim and windows in this room to make them pop. 
Another thing I did for this space, since we always have a baby in our room, is create a little in-room nursery by getting a canopy crib and making curtains. Again, that project is here on YouTube. We added a little art, our dresser from the last house, the poster bed, and an armoire since we don't have any closets for our clothing a rug that I found online. I'm really trying to do a lot of vintage rugs around our house. I think they really work with the Victorian style that our house was built in. Next, let's talk about the living room. We didn't make a whole lot of changes in here except for refinishing the floors, some paint, we painted the trim and the walls, brought in rugs, decor, art, furniture, and that's pretty much it. Now, that one piece of furniture where we have the books, that came with the house. Well, it didn't really come with the house. We purchased it, but the owner asked if he should move it or if we would like to purchase it. I thought it fit there perfectly, so we definitely wanted that. Just like in the bedroom, I pleated some cheap curtains for this room to give them a bit more structure. Sometimes I think about changing them and sometimes I think the plain linen with all of the other colors I have going on is just right. So we'll see if I end up deciding to change that at some point. The only main floor bathroom is also a laundry room, but we make that work. It did not have a bathtub whenever we first got this house. We pulled that out of one of the cottages that was on the property that needed to be torn down. We had it sandblasted and we painted it. I also acquired some trim from a salvage shop. There wasn't any substantial trim around the window, so I wanted it to match the rest of the house. We also added beadboard. We had to shorten the long closet wall behind the bathtub so the bathtub could fit in there and just make a little half closet. One of my favorite projects we did in here was convert a really beautiful little antique dresser with a marble top into a sink base. This was a project I was inspired by my friend Sarah from She Holds Dearly to do, and we really love it. It has worked very well in here for a few years. We also, of course, redid the flooring. We just used a classic marble hexagon tile. We still have our washer and dryer in here, but with some baskets and candles and pretty light fixtures and mirrors and the tub, I still find it quite cozy. The stairs were one of the selling features for me in this farmhouse. They are so beautiful. They are painted brown, so they just needed to be refinished. We needed to obviously repaint the spindles. We did that once, but we have a lot of rowdy kids in here. We also added some wallpaper and a gallery wall to really emphasize this beautiful space and make all of the trim and woodwork stand out. At the top of the stairs, I found this beautiful piece of art on Facebook Marketplace for a really good price. It's a real oil painting. Can't remember exactly what I paid for it. I also found the rug at an antique shop. We need to repaint that little dresser, but I keep that there just because I'm afraid of kids going off the top or climbing and so i use that to just block it the little nursery area all we really did was paint the floors we had the floors refinished everywhere else but the man who did them said that this room and the next room over weren't really worth refinishing they didn't have the same quality i don't know if it was an add-on or what at some point but we just painted them and they could really stand to be repainted again but they do work out really well. I've touched them up once before, so it's only really been totally painted once. Same with this room. Again, it could totally stand to have some touch-ups, but with a rug covering a lot of the flooring in both rooms, it's totally fine, and I don't find it to be that annoying. I think if I had painted floors in the main level of our farmhouse where there's lots of traffic, it would get really frustrating and annoying. Now, the bathroom in this upstairs room, we have barely touched. It's probably the only room in this house that hasn't had a lot of our attention and focus on it, but that's okay. It's doable. So at the time, it had the brown floors and that vanity and the shower and that beautiful window, and it still does, except for that. We painted the trim, so it's white now instead of brown. 
We painted the floors. We left the exact same shelf above the toilet and the vanity and the mirror. I, of course, put in a prettier curtain for the shower curtain, but that's about it. Now, this beautiful room has so many windows, so much light. We brought in some antique beds that I found on Facebook Marketplace. I also made and pleated some curtains. Well, I made about three panels and decided that the project was gonna take too much time. So I found someone locally who could finish up what I'd started because eight panels in this room, I also wanted to line them with blackout fabric so that whenever it gets light again really early, we can make this room nice and dark. We painted it with the same blue color that we used in the kitchen. The next door room, it was painted brown on the floor, just like the other room. We just refinished it, sanded, and beautiful floors were underneath. I found these curtains from Two Pages Curtains. After taking all of the time to make the pleated and lined curtains in the room next door, I decided I should look for other options. Super, super happy with these. They are very well made, easy to install. I will leave a link below for the ones in here. We picked out this orangish color. They had lots of swatches and I was a little bit indecisive for a while, but since there was already this beautiful rug in here that I found on Facebook Marketplace and these beds, I thought it just went really well. Now we keep the kids' rooms really, really simple. A couple of beds, a rug, a dresser. I try not to keep too much in here so that I can pull them back together pretty easily whenever they get messy. I thought about adding some more color in this room and I'd really like to but we're just gonna keep it really simple for now. The bathroom in this room was in decent condition. It just needed some makeup. We didn't totally gut it, but I wanted there to be two sinks instead of just one. So we had a table made by someone local. I found some vintage bowls that we turned into sinks. They are still working well. This was a couple of years ago now, I wanna say. They still work great. We did, I believe, a marble, no, it was a quartz top. For the flooring, I did the same hexagon marble tile that we did downstairs. I try to make classic choices so that I won't have to redo things constantly. I also chose the same paint color that we did in the downstairs bathroom and on the front door and on the mantle in the bedroom. Again, just trying to keep a little bit of consistency throughout the house. Well, that is every room in this 1860s farmhouse. I can't believe it was already five years ago that I excitedly carried my camera around this whole place, introducing you to this property. As with any DIY project, it is never done. So if you want to see where this place goes in the years to come, make sure to hit that subscribe button. Thank you so much for stopping by our farmhouse.